Yeah, Andy Perwall, ID yeah. Boxing. This is Andy Perwall for ID Boxing. I'm joined by blinded Frank Smith here in London. Frank K. Taylor retaining her undisputed crown. What did you make of her victory tonight? Yeah, look, dominant performance, you know, great as always from Casey Taylor. Uh, now the aim is let's make the big one again, let's make the Serrano fight. Got to get her back to Ireland, um, and that's the focus for us. Speaking to people earlier on, some of them have suggested it could be maybe she just performed slightly above her opponent tonight, or she may well be on the decline. What are your thoughts on either of those? No, I think she performed, I think it was a good performance. Um, you know, but I think what we always see with Katie is, she for the big big fights like against Serrano that's what she gets most up for and that's what we got to focus on now you know she's got I think she's been open and saying she's probably got a couple of years that you know folk of, of, of boxing left we've got to get the big fights for her and uh, you know the most important thing like I say is getting her back to Ireland um, you know hopefully we can make Croke Park happen sort of April May next year. How realistic is it that you can take a big show like that back to Ireland? Yeah, no, I'm very confident. You know, look, she's a superstar. You only have to see the travelling fans she brings here, the travelling fans she brought she brought to Madison Square Garden. You know, she has a huge following. And to, for, to do that for the first time... Oh, are we getting chucked out? What, are we getting chucked out for the big boss? Oh, oh, actually, that's more important than me. Um, yeah, you only have to see the following Kate, Katie's got. And, uh, you know, I think, I think she sells out any stadium in Ireland, but Croke Park's going to be a lot of fun. Kiko Martinez stunning Jordan Gill tonight. Frank, what did you make of his win? Yeah, look, great win from Kiko Martinez. You know, uh, not long ago, you know, was the Josh Warrington fight where a lot of people said he should retire after that. Um, I think he's still got a lot left to give and some big fights there for Kiko Martinez. Jo um, Jordan Gill stepped up, you know, he went in there against someone, you know, who's a, who's a big puncher, world level fighter. Um, and I'm sure Jordan will be, will be back stronger, but great win for Kiko Martinez. Should we just move so that we can just finish this should off? We stay on it. Yeah, move. should we stay, stay on the like, talk? Go on, and we'll, we'll stay on the talk. Boxing, Go on. Like, <laughs> is, no, but this is ID boxing all over. That's what it's called, isn't it? Yeah, it's called. I'm yeah. glad you remembered. Yeah. It's called ID boxing, I was going Frank. To call it boxing social, but then I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's getting quiet. <laughs> uh, Frank, just on what's next for him? Uh, he mentioned he wanted Lee Wood next. What's most likely for, for um, <laughs> Keith? Running kind of? into the curtain there. Um, yeah, Lee Wood's an interesting fight. Maurizio Lara is a very interesting fight as well. So you know, there's lots of options out there for him. Let's see. Uh, let's see how things play out. Johnny Fisher with that huge following as well um, continues to impress. But I'm sure a lot of people would like to see him step up and face kind of a bit more of a sterner test next time. Out. Yeah, for sure. I think you know he's had a bit of time out. Good to get him back in the ring. Um, but yeah, we got to step him up. Great following, as you say. The noise in there at 8:30 tonight was that was great to see. Um, and I think you're going to see some you're going to see some big fights. Johnny coming up, um, but agree, you, you know, he needs some step-up fights and hopefully get him out very soon. Eddie Scott near again continues to impress Frank. Talk about her victory against Mary Romero and what next? Yeah, great win. Mary Romero, obviously a real talented fighter and uh, Ellie Scott is moving very quickly. You know, she had a frustrating win earlier in the year in February, I think it was, which was a tough fight for her. But I think she's shown, you know, a development and uh, and, and really going to be a great fighter coming through, working well with Shane McGuigan and lots to look forward to there. I think world title fighter hopefully next for her. Jermaine Franklin was here tonight. Frank, what did you make of seeing the big man in person? Obviously, ahead of his bat with Dillian White. Yeah, look, he's uh, he's ready to go. You know, we we he's he's, um, he's been training for this fight for a long, long time. We've been speaking for, speaking about it for a while. You know, we tried to make it obviously quite a while ago the Jermaine Franklin fight against Dillian White. Um, so you know, he, he's ready to go for that big opportunity for him if he can go in there and beat Dillian White. You know, there's some massive heavyweight fights out there for him. But you know, Dillian's uh, Dillian's a great fighter, and I think I think we've got a lot to look forward to on November 26. Any risk of uh, the teams kind of overlooking the challenge of Jermaine Franklin with all the talk of a potential rematch with AJ taking place next year? Look, I think heavyweight boxing there's a risk always in that. You know, we, we've seen it time and time again. But you know, Dillian's a Dillian's a true professional. Always takes every fight seriously. Um, so you know, I'm sure he's going to be as prepared as ever for Jermaine Franklin. And then just away from that one again, Bivol Ramirez next week. Frank, a great fight. Looking forward to getting out to Abu Dhabi? Yeah, flying out there tomorrow. Looking forward to our first show. You know, Abu Dhabi, I was there a couple a week ago for the UFC, which was an amazing night. You know, we've got t about nine, ten thousand people in the arena uh, next weekend. Bivol Ramirez, a fight very much looking forward to, WBA mandatory. You've got um, Barrett, Zelfa Barrett against Rakimov for the IBF world title there. Uh, you've got Chantel Cameron, Jesse McCaskill, Undisputed, Galau Yafai. Cow your fires on the card yet? You got Akid Fiaz, Campbell Hatton, and three local fighters as well. So it's, it's very much a it's a big show, big show, and good to good to be out there for our first first one of many.
And Frank, just final thing, we haven't had a chance to catch up this week with all the latest developments around Conor Ben. I just want to get your thoughts on how you've seen this week unfold. Yeah, look, I mean, it, as you've spoken to Eddie about a lot, it's, there's only so much we can say. And it's hard to keep saying the same thing when a lot of it is sort of held back with legal discussions that are ongoing with Conor Ben, his team and, and various parties. So, um, you know, I think you've, you've, had, you've seen some uh, statements in, in pieces in The Sun and The Independent with Conor Ben where he's spoken. I think you're going to see him speak a bit more in the coming week as well. Um, you know, ultimately, I get, I, I, every time I talk about it, I say the word process, but that is what it comes down to. He's got to go through a process and, you know, from there, people can make their, make their verdicts. A lot of people have already made their verdicts. All, again, as I've said a million times, just let that process play out. You know, your opinion doesn't have to change, but what's important to him is being, having the ability to try and keep his career on track. Um, and, you know, that's, that's what he's going through now. But it, look, I, I think we go around in circles saying the same thing time and time again, uh, where, there's, where there's only so much that can actually be said. When does that time come then, Frank, when more can be divulged? How long do you expect to see this kind of prolonged for? Well, look, I mean, the first focus is the actual legal and the actual process for him to be able to continue boxing. As I've said a million times, he would love to have come out and spoke on day one, but there is a way to do this. And as much as he wants to speak, his long-term career is the most important thing. And in order to have a long-term career, he needs to do things the right way for his career. Um, and you know, hopefully it's not too long away. Hopefully that discussion they're having with the various parties, that legal discussion, in the next couple of weeks we'll see how that plays out and go from there. So you've got close toys with the Eubank family as well. Do you have any idea as to what's going to happen next with Eubank Jr.? Do you expect him to hold on to see if Ben Fox can happen or do you expect him to move on to another opportunity? Frank, it's a pleasure to work for you. Thank you, Barry. <laughs> um, that question was about Chris Eubank, what he does. Yeah, look, I think there's a, he's got a lot of big opportunities out there, a lot of big fights. You know, he's, he wants... Uh, you know, he wants to do the Conor Ben fight, but there's also the likes of the Gennady Golovkin fight. You know, is a possible fight against Canelo Alvarez down the road from him. There's so many opportunities for Chris Eubank Jr. You know, his profile, not his profile, he already had a big profile, but sort of the fans' view of him is on another level now. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a bit of a hero right now. Um, and, you know, I think he's going to have a busy 2023. He wants to get back out there, get back active, and, you know, I'm sure the Sowlands and, and Wasserman are working on what's next. Frank, appreciate your time. Thanks for being to me in ID Boxing. Cheers, mate. Good to see you.